Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are looking at 100 times here using the Hitachi TM3030 Plus at Alan Goldwater's Magic Sound Lab. And this is the Pillow One, the very puffed up Hutchison-like effect that was created in a Vega experiment by Henk Uren. And you can see here there are these uh, what look like cells and we noticed these in the optical imagery that we took and shared previously but if we zoom into these uh, you will see that there is these kind of there's the kind of cells these uh, potentially crystal grain areas but you'll see that there are these holes in here uh, fairly regular looking holes and they are all over the surface of this thing. Now, if they go all the way through, you'll wonder how any sort of pressure was able to be maintained when this thing inflated. What is coming out of these holes? That is something that is worth asking. And when we go across and look at various areas of these, uh, and we go down further and zoom in, You'll see there are a plethora of these things, and in the center of them, they often have something in the center, and often it looks like it's a different material or a different constitution of material. Okay, now are these these toroids that are forming a semi-regular semi array, as we saw on the Hutchison fracture sample, and as we saw on the Lion Jewel sample, that is the question it certainly looks like it may be that kind of thing going on i don't see a lot of outies these are a, seem to be fairly exclusively innies unless it's not so obvious where the outies are and you know um that may be the case and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come out of this and i'm going to zoom down a little and you will see that these become uh, quite extreme so uh, we're going at a different sort of distance here because the surface of the pillow is expanding so if we come down um, down this area you'll see it looks a little bit yeah there's the cells here and then this is not quite got this cellular action going on. Okay, and if we look at this kind of area here, you'll see that it is much more disrupted. So we will need to go in and focus. And you'll see, look at this. It's intensely disrupted. It's like layers upon layers of this kind of holy action going Again, things kind of appearing in the center of these, but not always. Major rolling shutter on an SEM like this. It is what it is. So if I focus that in. Okay, so you can see Maybe this is an alti here and this is an inny. So you've got that lighter area on the top there. So let's have a look at that. Now, sometimes you don't always get the beam going in there. Let's go in a little closer. And get the focus better. No, that's about that. So I'm going to do a, a save on that. So we are actually looking at the secondary electrons here. And this is the one that gives us the best topological view of what is going on. So, yeah, you can see here, it definitely looks like to be something in these pits. Okay. And uh, is this a peak and this a pit? An outie and an innie? 
don't know, it was a bit of a surprise to see this thing perforated like a tea bag. Um, <clears throat> but there we go. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the... where we are looking at this on the SEM EDS. So we're going to acquire data for these three sample points, pillow 01, 217, 218, and 219. And I'm going to do the auto ID quick. And you can see we have carbon, oxygen, copper. No zinc. The zinc appears to have gone at least on this spot here. So it seems to find a little bit of manganese on this, uh, but it might be misguessing it. So but it's possible. Really is thinking it's seeing that. I don't see that other beam there, so I'm going to turn that off. There is a slight peak here, but I'm not sure that's manganese because we don't see that second peak down there. Okay, so <clears throat> the first one which was 217 here, this white spot had 58% copper and then it had oxygen 11 and then carbon 29.9, so nearly 30% carbon on that one. And then we are going to look at this one here. The second one, which was 218 over here, it seems to think it was almost all copper. Now, like I say, this is not backscatter. This is secondary electrons, so this is showing more topological. And, okay, so the speculation was there was the black, was that maybe carbon or was it copper oxide? Well, there is definitely oxygen there, so we can definitely say there would likely to be some copper oxide. But look at the carbon here on this growth here. It's 38.92%. So what is going on? That is the question. I'm going to add that to the report. Okay. So we'll have another quick look around this. Bring up the SEM window and switch to the fast scan and we will come out to about a thousand. We'll have a scoot around. So I'm going to go this way. So here there looks like some big impacts here. So you can see this kind of splat mark here. There we go. See how regular and unregular these holes are. They, they certainly look like semi-regular spacing, don't they? Like some sort of self-organized mesh. Now, my view at the moment is, are these are the toroids. They are wetted together into a mesh and enveloping things, as Ken Shoulders would say. And that the material is being pushed down because the torrid is going into the surface. So the center of the torrid will be forcing material into the material. Okay. So that is, in my view, why we are seeing what we are seeing. That's my current view. I might change it. And that is my choice. Okay. So, <laughs> I 
definitely something there. Uh, at a distance, it mostly looks unimpressive. You have to get to around about 500 times before you start seeing the teabag effect. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> now here you can see quite linear line there, all the way across, even across the crystal grain boundaries. So this might be the brushing on the brass that is playing a role here. This looks like a, a large impact. Now you can't see anything going on around that until we change the sensor so that we can see <clears throat> Maybe different elements. You really get an idea of the linear effect here. Going all the way across those individual crystals. Of course, when you're looking at it like this, you don't see the topology so much. So really the secondary electron is better to show the topology. Boom. <laughs> okay, so... A little bit more of this. We'll have a look at some of this more disrupted area. 